Okay. I'm gonna grab one out of, uh, from Eve. That's this is this is one of Ginger's babies. Okay. Now I know it makes a difference because one's got three, uh, four babies, and one's got eight. Well, actually, she's got seven left. The little white one. But I want you to look at the size of these rabbits. Okay. And I wish you could feel them because this one is so fat and plump. This one is healthy, but it's not overly fat and plump like this one is. Now, folks, the red rabbit is a week. A whole week younger than the white one. Okay? Now you would say, okay, she's only got three. Well actually she's got four. Remember? She got she got Jesse's one of Jesse's five. We moved down here, okay? So actually she's got four. But here's the thing. Okay? If that makes so much of a difference, explain this to me. Here's the one that Ginger's been raising. This is the one she got of, of, of Jesse's. Okay, now look at this one. Let me pull this one back out. You can't tell the difference in that size? Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rascals, they can't, I can't hang on to them. They're too wiggly. My hands won't work. Uh, but see the difference in the size? See? There's only a couple of days difference in the age of these rabbits. Okay? If genetics is not important in rabbit size, and you're gonna to try to tell me it's only because she only had to milk for, for four, 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 and she had to milk for seven, and up until, what, a couple of weeks ago, eight? Don't get me wrong, I agree with that. But here, this one has been with Ginger and all of these little butter balls, these three little butter balls, since it was about three days old. Okay? Now, the only difference in the two, they've all been getting the same care. The only difference is genetics. Right? If I'm wrong, let me know. Tell me what I'm missing. What, what am I not taking into consideration? This one's been in the same place those have since it was three days old, and it's not grown out like that. It is still, it is still tiny. That's a little bug, the little white one is. And it is still tiny compared to those, okay? So if just having more milk because you've got less babies, there's more to it than that, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I already knew that, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually showing you, okay? Proof here. She's had that baby long enough that if just her having a, just a few babies to produce milk for was what made the majority of the difference here, she would have had that white one fattened up too because she feeds it when she feeds the others, okay? Just wanted to throw that out there, okay? It's to, if you want a quick update, that's fine. I mean, here's Pearl. She's still got her two. We're going to, in the next, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be weaning these guys. Uh, in fact, Eve's, Eve's babies are... This next week, we're going to start weaning them. I've, I've got some that are smaller than others, and I think what I'm going to do is I might start two or three at a time, start weaning off the bigger ones. Okay, but this is Pearl's. This is one of Pearl's little babies. I'm just going to, I'll just pull out the one and show you. This is Pearl's little baby. See, getting nice and big. Little butterball, nice and healthy. This is, this is Pepper's baby. Okay. Um, Skies. Skies guy still got her four. Uh, they're running around in here. I'll pull one out. This is a little, oh, it's a little chocolate looking one I call it. Uh, it's actually just a chestnut. See? She's got four. She ended up with three bucks and a doe. The black otter. The black otter is a doe. I haven't decided yet. I may keep that one. I'm not sure. I'm going to keep both of the offspring from Pearl and Pepper because I'm going to need another Netherland dwarf buck and naturally gonna need more does especially one out of pearl so uh, hello now moving on down uh, since we last brought you a video this is the uh, I guess we'll call this uh, part one of the main event here this is a new addition to the rabbit tree this is Twix come here Twix baby here, let's move this stuff out of the way this is Twix if I can come on sweetie here, come over here where I can get under your hand. Get my hands under you. Careful. Watch your toes. Put your toes out, baby. There you go. 
this. I know this is not the best way to pick up a rabbit, but I just I can't do it any other way. They seem just they want they don't they won't let me do it. Um, they're tame, but they don't like me just putting my hand underneath them and picking them up. This is Twix. Twix is a mini Rex. I purchased her. I guess what around the, what third or fourth of April. Um, I don't know when this will get posted, but film date is the 12th of April, so we've had her, I guess, about 8 or 10 days. About a week now. Okay, she is just as beautiful as can be. She is a red-eyed white, as you can see. She's a, again, she's a Netherland, or... <laughs> she's a mini Rex. She is... She is... She is grown. She's full-grown. And I purchased her, she was bred. Now Twix is pedigree. Okay, and we hope to, we hope to, hopefully this is, oh, 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 I'm sorry, sweetie, come here, oh. Okay, I won't touch your nose. Here. Woo. My goodness, I'm glad we cut your toenails. I would have been in trouble. Okay, settle in. She was, I purchased her, she was bred, she was about, seven or eight days along something like that ten I have palpated her it does appear as though she is pregnant she's due on the 25th of April Don't scratch my arm, so yeah, right there. and again she's pedigreed she comes from she's bred to a pedigreed buck I have all that information and I hope someday not only will I, am I going to be raising pedigreed stock from her but I'm also going to be showing hopefully that stock but anyway i'm going to put twix back where she belongs and hopefully she uh just so you know um she is bred to the buck she's bred to is corona and he is a broken chocolate buck and so there's a lot of there's a lot of dilution blues and lilacs and chocolate in twix's pedigree so hopefully we'll be Get some pretty babies from her when the time comes. Okay. Now, you see, here's Jessie. There's Jessie. I palpated her yesterday, but it was a couple days early. I don't think that she's pregnant. But we're going to give her another couple days, and I'm going to try it again. Uh, palpated Eve yesterday. She wasn't pregnant. I put her with a buck. She took immediately. So hopefully, hopefully she's got some little buns in the oven on the way. This is the four that Jesse kept. They're going to be weaned uh, over the next week. Now, this is part one. Twix, we're very proud of her. She's a beautiful little girl. This is part one of our main event. We're going to pa pause the camera. We're going to go outside the rabbit tree, and we're going to bring you part two of our main event for this video. We're very, we're very proud and looking forward to bringing this to you. We'll be right back. Okay, folks, we're back again. Here's part two. This too, this is Smitty. His, his, the breeder gave him the name of Black Smith, so I called him Smitty. Anyway, he is... Well, you, you can do the math. I'll just give you his birth date is February 2nd. So he's a little over eight weeks old. But he is a... No, obviously, he's a black. He's also a mini Rex. He's also pedigree. Um, he's not. He's not directly related to Twix, but he is from the same line. So the lady that I bought Twix from, I did buy her bread, but she didn't have a mature buck that was ready to be bought. So, so I got little Smitty. I just got to wait for him to grow up. That's no problem. He's just as sweet as he can be. But uh, we're happy to have Smitty also on the homestead. He's adjusting. They're both adjusting. Uh, just to, you know, it's been a while since we brought, well, other than cornflake, it's been a while since we brought a new rabbit onto the homestead. And in case some of you were wondering, you know, I know a lot of you real, you know, have uh, watched our videos before. When we don't feed, pelletized rabbit feed. What we feed is regular, it's, it's alfalfa hay. It's a, you know, baled, baled it, we buy, it, we buy it by the bale and we just break it off and we feed it to them. And Twix, 
Twix, or I'm sorry, uh, Smitty's done just fine. Uh, but keep a close watch because he was being fed pellets. He's adjusted. It's, we've had him what, about two weeks now. Mm -hmm. well, we, got him, we got him the same day we got Twix. So every, I don't know exactly the exact date, but and he has adjusted just fine to eating the alfalfa hay. He has adjusted just fine to using our watering system. Uh, Twix, on the other hand, she adjusted fine to using our automatic watering system. She learned how to, they learned how to use it right away. Rabbits are smart, it, it doesn't take them no time. Twix, on the other hand, she did, for a day or two, she did have a little bit of diarrhea from switching from the pellets over to the hay. And that's something that we know is a possibility and we always keep a watch out for it. Because if it, was, if it were to get bad, what we would have to do is pull the alfalfa hay and feed her strictly grass hay and water for a while, you know, uh, until it clears up or, 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 or what have you. And there's other steps that you can take when you have a digestive upset in a rabbit, and I won't go into all that today. You could almost write a book because rabbits' digestive systems are so sensitive to just practically anything. Uh, if you introduce any new food into their diet, let's just, just, just be aware that you need to do it carefully and in moderation and, and if you add in if you give them something new like say if you pull dandelion greens or something out of your yard or, or and you just want to give them a treat just a leaf or two at first you got to see how they react to it give them a chance to adjust because their digestive system especially a small one like this oddly enough in this case the mature doe who's bred she actually didn't fare as well as the baby usually i, I would i would have thought it'd be the other way around but he, he's doing just fine. He's doing just fine. And he's he doesn't like me holding him like this. Turn in there. Sit in there. There you go. There he is. But anyway, hopefully, uh, between him and Twix and whatever baby she ends up with out of the buck that she has bred to, hopefully we'll have a pretty good start on you know the mini rex breed and some pedigree stock for that you know so that's what we wanted to bring to you today uh i've actually i think added a little bit more information we were just planning on coming out here and showing you the the, the new the newbies uh, but you know you know me i always get off topic at least three or four times in a video so uh, hope hopefully you got some information that was useful if you didn't get anything useful, hopefully maybe it was just a little entertaining. You know, if you can just sit there and say, ha ha, look at the fat hill, Billy. Hell, you got entertained a little bit, so, hey, it's all good, right? Anyway, uh, looks like everything out here is going, going well. One thing that I didn't tell you guys in a previous video, we had a blowing storm come up. Melby's babies were about I'm gonna say about 10 days old. She had them in this nest box here, and we had a blowing rain come up. And I keep in mind we've had litters out here before, so this is not something that would happen very often. We keep the even if it's not completely covered, we keep the top covered so that they can stay dry. But this time the rain was blowing from the west. And even though there's trees and everything back behind here, it blew up and what it did was it blew in and it soaked the bedding and the babies and the hair and everything in the nest box. They all got too cold and they died. So sadly, we lost Belby's first litter for 2016. If you'll recall, that's where there was a couple of tricolors in there and uh, there was a solid black and I think there was a broken black in there. Uh, but Velvy, she's very resilient, and I palpated her, uh, I don't know just when, but I do think, I'm, I'm fairly certain that she is bred. Uh, she's been a little grumpy, showing a little aggression towards the rabbits that are living next door to her, so I'm pretty sure that has something to do with her being pregnant as well. I mean, it doesn't always, but... Since, we, since I know Velvie's personality and this is to change, I'm pretty sure that she's pregnant again. Now, uh, Pepper, there's Pepper. 
he, he's getting ready to go back to work. Now, Salt, I told you uh, Twitch was due on the 25th. Salt. Sorry. I'm always there for a second here. School bus is going by. My little boy just got up. My, my little boy. My 14-year-old smart mouth teenage boy. Let's get that right. Uh, he just got off the school bus. But uh, Salt is actually the next birth we should have. I've also palpated her, but she's pretty far along now. Uh, I think in... I think she's 14, 16, maybe even 18 days old. Anyway, she's due on the 21st. She's due to Kendall. And she should be the next litter that is due. Remember, she had gave birth to her litter, and they were all stillborn. And we, you know, we gave her like four or five days, I think, or something, and then turned around and, and, and regret her. And this will be that litter. So hopefully she's going to bounce back and give us a pretty litter. She's bred. She is. She is bred to Mufasa, our little, our little uh, chocolate and white. I guess he's a broken. I don't know if there is such a thing in lion heads. I guess he would be a Charlie. Because uh, his only coloration is on his ears, around his eyes, and I think he's got a little bit on his nose there. Uh, it's very little color. Anyway. Uh, so salt's the next birth that we have due. That's coming up the 21st. Uh, unless something just drastically changes, that might be. We might. We will probably wait until then until we bring you our next rabbit update video. Uh, or we may wait if salt kindles around the 21st. We may wait until the 25th or after and see what Twix is going to do for us, and we'll just show you both litters and together in video. So. That's pretty much all I've got to share with you. If you've got any questions, like, like always, uh, you can either leave them in a comment, you can send me a private message through YouTube, or you can email me at uh, hillbillyhomestead at outlook.com. Uh, I've actually got two Outlook emails you can you can send it to hillbillyhomestead or hillbillyhomestead, and, and they're both at outlook.com. It doesn't matter which one you send it to, I'll get it. If you got any questions and you don't want to post them publicly or through YouTube, you can contact me that way. Uh, on occasion, if somebody had some questions, needed some help, you know, contact me that way through email, and we can exchange phone numbers. That way, we can talk easier uh, in, you know, in, uh, live on the phone. If uh, you know, if that would work out better for you. But anyway, we're gonna get out of here. As always, thanks for watching. I hope this, I hope this was either uh, informational or entertaining to somebody. Look forward to bringing you updates about those hay racks and see how those work out for us. And uh, I guess until next time, folks, y'all have a great day. Bye.